Okay, girlfriend. We are down here with Melon for our week one video recap. What is that? So in these videos, we're going to go over all the things that we've introduced to the puppies in this first week. And they're nice to follow along with your puppy's progress and all the watch the new things that we add each week. Hi, good girl. But the first thing that we're going to start with is a little bit of play. We want to warm these puppies up, get them moving and grooving. We want them happy, comfortable, confident down here in the training space. Good girl, Melon. Oh my goodness, you caught it. You got it. You're little. We just had her brother down here who's like twice her size. Yeah, oh my goodness, you're tough though. Look at you. Good girl, Melon. So play is also incredibly important for teaching your puppy about bite inhibition. So what I mean by bite inhibition is how the puppies use their mouths. We don't want them biting at us. We don't want them biting hard when they take food from us, which we'll do in the training. When we get to the training exercises, we want them using a soft mouth, not a hard mouth. And so whenever we interact with the puppy that's play, we always want to make sure that we're playing with them with a the toy. So they're learning to bite the toy and use their mouths on the toy and not on us and not on our clothes. Right? Good girl. Here we go. Oh, perfect. So the flirt pole, which is what this toy is, is um, a nice toy to play with puppies because as you can see, she's all interested in the toy that I'm dragging around on the ground. And she's not interested in trying to bite at me at all. Good girl. So when I win it, I can have her chase it a little bit. Woo! And then I'll let her catch it. So it's important that little bit of chase, let the puppy catch it, then do a little bit of tug. All right? If you only have the puppy chase and you never let them win it, then it's going to start to get boring pretty fast for the dog. Good girl. We move into our training exercises here. We're going to be using food. And we're also going to be using a marker system. So the marker is going to tell the puppy when they got it right, and it's always followed by a food reward. The marker that we're going to be using is the verbal word yes. So that's actually going to be the first training exercise that we do. So I'm going to get this toy back from Melon. Can I have that? Give me that. Oh, I got it. I'm going to grab some of the food and we're going to start by charging that marker word. So I've got some food in my hand and I'm going to say yes and bring the food down to her. Now what I want to see, which is exactly what she did, is when I say the word yes, that the puppy anticipates that the food reward is coming. Yes. And also that they should get the food out of my hand when I say yes say the word. Okay, so we did that three times in a row. I just charged the marker word, but now I'm going to use the, um, the reward marker to get her to do some things or to mark when she does something. So we're going to practice following a food bluer now, which is another little foundational puppy step. We use the food to uh, move the dog into the positions that we want. So I really need to make sure that the puppy is happy following the food that's in my hand. Yes, and you would think that Melon has never eaten anything a day in her life, and I'm showing her the food for the first time. Yes, and so that's great to have such a food motivated dog because it means that training is going to be easy. Okay. Yes, so I did that three times. Now I'm going to pair the following the food. Good girl. I'm going to pair following the food with her name. I'm also going to set a little bit of a boundary right off the bat. She loves food so much, she knows I have the food in my hand, but I'm not gonna start to interact with her with the food until she's got four feet on the ground. So I don't want her to think that this jumping behavior is gonna get her um, quicker access to the food, okay? So when she's got four feet on the ground, that's when I'm going to come down with my food hand. Melon, yes, I'm gonna have to feed her for that. Good girl. So we did a few reps of following the food lure. Now we're going to move on to position. 
I'm going to show her the food and ask her sit. Yes. Now again, she loves the food so much, she's so excited that it's in my hand. Her butt is going down on the ground, but notice how I wait to say yes until, for the most part, her front feet are on the ground too. So as we continue to practice her sits each week, sit, yes. And you can see even that second rep, they're going to get more and more, yes, still. Good girl, Melon. Yeah, let's do that one more time. Sit. Yes. You see, I waited until her front feet, for the most part, are down on the ground before I released that cookie to her. What a good job, girlfriend. Yeah, you did it. She is like so into that food. I like to try to see if they want to take a little play break in between every few exercises because even though Melon is incredibly food motivated, when we ask them to do things for the food, it is work, right? And it is, um, you know, introducing new things to puppy or even an adult dog, it can be frustrating sometimes. So we wanna do a few reps and then we wanna take a little play break where the dog can blow off some of the steam from the training. Whoa, that one came right at ya and then we'll move on to our next exercise. Oh my goodness. So the next thing that we're gonna do here with the food is we're gonna teach Mel in a hand target. I'll show you how we taught the hand target. Good girl. It's gonna look very similar to the food lure, but it's different because I'm actually gonna disconnect my hand from the puppy and I'm gonna mark and reward her when she reconnects with my food hand. So I'll show you what that looks like now. This is the hand target. <laughs> so I'm gonna show her the food in my hand. She's on the food lure, but then I'm gonna to say, touch, yes. And I disconnect from her. When she catches up with my hand, that's when I'm gonna mark with the yes. Touch, yes. And I release the cookie for the reward. Touch, yes. Want to do one more? You love it. Touch. Yes. Good girl. Very nice. Very nice job. Okay. One of the other exercises that we introduced in the first week is the mat. The mat will turn into a stay type behavior, but we teach it in baby steps for these baby puppies. Yes, I'm going to mark when Melon gets four feet on the mat, and then I'm going to reward her by setting the food right on the mat which is sometimes hard for them to find in the first week because they're so used to taking it from our hand. Ready? Get it. Then I'm going to release her from that mat, pick it up, move it. Do it again. Yes. Good girl. Yes. Okay. Get it. Wow. Oh, there it is. So we're just going to do it a couple of reps. And this week, all my criteria is, is that the puppy gets on the mat. I don't really care what they do when they're on there. But next week, we'll add a little bit of criteria to that. And that's a fun one to watch evolve over the next couple of weeks. All right, so now we're going to get, you're so little. We're going to get Melon dressed in her harness. So we want to socialize these puppies to whatever kind of walking gears that they might have in the future. So I'm going to get her harness on. I'm going to feed her a treat for that. Do this clip. Good. And then I just want to see that they're comfortable moving around with the harness on. Sometimes it's a little bizarre for them in the first week or two. She seems to be moving around okay. She's not too paralyzed by it. They might put some food on the ground for them to chase, or we can play with them with their toys again. Good girl. Ooh, you like that guy? Perfect. Good girl. Oh, she likes the octopus. Get it. What a playful puppy. Good girl. 
So even though I'm down here on the floor with her right now, and I'm playing with her with this toy instead of the flirt bowl, you can see that I am not encouraging the puppy to get into my lap at all. I'm playing with her out here with the toy, kind of having her chase it a little bit, and then I toss it, right? And again, that's going to work on that bite inhibition. If I was trying to, you know, if I was letting her do this, do you see how she just bit my finger? So again, I'm just setting a boundary right off the bat that when we play, even if I'm down on the floor with you, we play with you on the floor and we play with the toy, okay? So it just takes some consistency and over time your puppy will learn that this is how I interact during playtime. Of course, if it's calm time and it's snuggle time, you can have your puppy in your lap and you can give them pets and hugs and kisses. But when it's playtime, I don't let that puppy in my lap because I know the next thing they're going to do is start biting me. Oh my goodness, you're so cute. You did it. Good girl. So we've got one more exercise. She's pretty comfortable in her harness, so I'm going to leave it on her for this last one. A little bit of handling. This is how your puppy is probably going to be handled at the groomer at the vet. They're going to require a lifetime of grooming and veterinary care, so it's important that we get them comfortable with how they're going to be handled there now. So I'm showing um, Melon that I have food in my hand. I'm taking my opposite hand and I'm going to bring it underneath her belly. Yes. And that's how she might be restrained at the vet. Oh my god, she's crazed for food. She's never eaten, ever. <laughs> now this time I'm going to pick up an ear. Yes. Good girl. So remember, every time I say yes, I'm releasing one of those treats that's in my hand. It's also teaching her a little bit of impulse control, right? Like she's so crazed for the food. Girlfriend, you're not going to get it until I say yes. <laughs> yes. So I just picked up her tail. Oh my goodness, you're a little turkey. And let's just do a leg. Yes. Good girl. And that's it. I'm out of food. Good girl, Melon. All right, so she did fantastic. Just to recap real quick, we started by charging our reward marker. We moved on to following a food lure. Then we, yeah, you can't chew on my brace. After the food lure, we practiced some sits and some hand targets. The first step in the map behavior, we got her dressed in our harness and played a little bit. And we finished with some of the handling exercises. Please make sure that you check out the video library for more detailed instructional videos on how to teach all these behaviors so you know what to keep working on at home. Also, please get your Zoom lesson booked for after your puppy goes home. The links for both of those things are in your initial confirmation email that you would have gotten when you registered for the program. Okay, so we will see you guys next week.